This video is on the Anycubic S1 Combo 3D printer. And jumping right to my conclusion, this is a great printer. And I'm honestly surprised. Lately, a lot of printers have been coming to me for testing and review purposes. And this is probably the first time I've seen a printer that actually ticks all the boxes. So let's rewind a bit and I'll explain how we got to this point. And if you get to the end of this video and you're in love with this machine as much as I am, and you wish to purchase one for yourself, then check out the affiliate link in the description as that will help support the channel and keep the lights on in the studio. Let's first go over what makes the Cobra S1 special. It's a fully enclosed Core XY system, which means it's perfect for high temperature materials like ASA and ABS, but it's also more than capable of handling your more typical filaments such as PETG and PLA. Another big calling feature of this printer is the Ace Pro multi-material system. A lot of its functionalities are built right into the printer so that you can use it while it's printing. Things such as filament drying and purge settings can be changed or turned on and off while the printer is actually running. This means no having to stop the printer and re-slice things or unloading filaments so that you can dry them first and put them back in. It's all built in. You can just power through, keep printing while that's happening. Speed wise, it's rated for 600 millimeters per second, although it runs nice and stable at around the 300 plus range. So it's a fast printer. And despite all that speed, it's actually pretty quiet. It runs at 46 decibels in normal mode and then 44 decibels in silent mode. And you get all the modern features of 3D printers of today that you come to expect. Things like AI spaghetti detection, cloud account access and remote printing, a 4.3 inch touchscreen that's fast and responsive. Pretty much everything you need is in this machine. So the structure of this video is to be a really quick and easy unboxing and setup and installation, just to cover the basics of what you can expect if you get this printer. And then I'm gonna go straight into some multicolor printing. There was a couple of issues I faced along the way, which I'll point out, but it wasn't a fault of the machine itself. It was actually just unlucky, but I'll get to that soon. So let's jump right into the first section and get this printer out of the box and I'll show you what's involved in that process. After you cut open the box, you simply remove the printer from the box itself and then remove all the bubble wrap and foam padding. Put the printer on a table and open up the front door and there'll be a few screws that you need to remove as well as any additional padding inside. Once you do all that, you can actually remove the Ace Pro filament system. With that out of the way, we can get inside. There should be a small box with some tools and accessories and a bit more padding that you need to remove. You also need to remove a few more screws which hold down the heat bed during transit. You can then cut off the cable ties which are holding the hot end in place and stopping the gantry from moving. Inside the accessories box, you're gonna find things like cables and bits and pieces, but you'll also find the rear spool attachment as well. And you can take that and it just simply screws onto the back of the printer. This will be used for your external spool holder. You also install the filament buffer, which is what feeds the four inlines from the Ace Pro filament system into the hot end of the printer itself. The top panel is just a plastic panel that sits on top of the printer. And when you look inside the Ace Pro filament system, you should find some PTFE tubes and just remove any other padding if there is some. On the back of the Ace Pro, you need to remove these tiny little blue clips Find a suitable place to put your Ace Pro, which in most cases, you're just going to put it on top of the printer itself. And there'll be a cable that you need to connect between the printer and the Ace Pro unit. These four tubes then connect to the filament buffer and you get these little cable management clips to help keep everything neat and tidy. That's pretty much it for the setup. Before turning on the printer, just make sure there's no screws still holding down the heat bed. And if you're all good, you can then turn on the printer. The setup process for the printer once it's on is pretty typical of other printers, but you just use that to go through the setup of connecting to your Wi-Fi, going through the calibration process and downloading any firmware if you need to. During the setup process, it'll ask you to also log in to an Anycubic account, which I highly recommend you do. This will give you cloud access to the printer. Loading filament into the Ace Pro system is actually pretty good. Simply open the lid, grab the end of the filament, and then drop it into one of the ports and it will start pulling through the filament all by itself. There's no having to push little tabs or anything. 
to get the filament started. One of the unique features of this printer is that it can actually dry while printing. When you go to the filament settings, you'll see there's a little option for drying and you can turn that on and then set what type of filament it is and what temperature you need and how much time you want. I'll test this all out later on. But first, let's do the first print that everyone does, a Benchy, which you'll actually find loaded onto the printer already. I was able to select the Benchy file, assign a color and start printing. Once the print was done, I removed the build plate and as with most printers these days, you just flex the build plate and the print pops off. There was a little bit of stringing on this model, but overall the quality is as good as you'd expect. The next thing I wanted to do was test out the multicolor printing capabilities of this Anycubic Cobra S1. Using the website Maker Online, which is Anycubic's 3D repository site, I found this really cool mandala wall art, which I felt was a good test because each layer is its individual color. And this way it should be a fairly quick print and there won't be too many color changes. So after assigning some of my own colors, I sliced it and sent it off to the printer. And after not too long, I was left with this, a really cool 3D printed mandala. Now I wanted to actually test a bit more technical color print and also the dry while printing function. So I found this Flexi Dragon model and assigned some colors to it and I didn't have any problem and it just printed fine. Once it cooled down, I popped it off the build plate and there was no seizing of the joints. Everything looked clean and really well done. So next I wanted to push it a little bit further. I wanted to do a whole plate of color prints. And this is where I had my first issue where I had a power interruption and it stopped the print. But it gave me a chance to test out the resume print function. Once power came back and I turned the printer back on, it said that the printing had been interrupted and if I wanted to resume, which I pushed OK to. I also noticed that one of the prints wasn't doing too well. So I was able to use the touch screen and actually select individual objects to skip. This meant that it would print the rest while skipping that one bad print. And so the Anycubic Cobra S1 just continued until it didn't. Because of the power outage, the heat bed actually dropped in temperature too much. And so when it resumed, some of those prints got dislodged and got jammed into the other ones and it just caused this whole mess. So in the end, I just had to stop the print and trash the whole thing. The next time, I didn't print as many just to speed the process up a bit. But this time, they all came out great. As you can see right here, they all articulate well, the colors don't bleed and the quality looks great. My daughter was really happy taking these little guys to school for all her friends. All right, time for my summary for the Anycubic Cobra S1. This 3D printer, like I said in the beginning, honestly surprised me with how good it is. I've tested a lot of brands at the moment and there's always some sort of shortcoming with them. Now, I'm not saying this machine is perfect. It's a hell of a way close to it. It's probably the first time in a long time where I could actually recommend another brand from a typical one that I talk about. And that's saying something because these guys have really set the bar. And now Anycubic has come along and said, hold my beer, I can do that too. Yes, there was a couple of problems along the way, which like I said, probably a user fault thing or just unlucky. It's honestly a printer that I'm going to keep in part of my fleet and use as part of the rest of my farm. If I was to fault anything about this printer, I would probably say the Ace Pro system, there's some room for refinement there. And with the new S1 Max coming out, with the new Ace Pro 2 system, it looks like they've resolved a lot of those issues already anyway. And I think that the new Ace Pro 2 system is even backwards compatible onto printers like the S1. I mean, the, the problems are already basically fixed. And just to go into detail what those problems were, I did find that with the filament, it had to be really straight when you put it in. I love that you could just drop the filament in and just auto fed without having to like push little levers or anything. That's a great quality of life feature that I like. So the big question is like, would I recommend this 3D printer to you to actually purchase for yourself? And honestly, I could say yes to that question. You're going to get it for probably a little bit cheaper than the competition for a similar printer in that sort of category. And if you wait for some sort of sale, you're probably gonna get a pretty steep discount on it as well. But I think anyone buying this printer is gonna be happy with what they got. It's capable, it's got good software that works, it's got all the features that you need that you've come to expect, and it prints great. So yes, I could recommend this printer. And 
I thank Anycubic for giving me the opportunity to test this printer out and show you my result. So the regular price for the Anycubic Cobra S1 Combo, that's the one that comes with the printer itself and the Ace Pro unit, is 1,199 Australian dollars. And definitely check out if I've listed any promotions in the description of this video. So that brings us to the end of the video on the Anycubic S1 Combo. I hope you found value in this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.